All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Abroad While Black. I am your co-host, Sean Burroughs. I'm the co-founder of Ingressive for Good, a, company, a foundation tasked with uh, training 1 million African youth, deploying $1 million in funding, and connecting our community members to 5,000 jobs over the next five years. I'm also the CEO of Burroughs Enterprises, and there I'm passionate about building an economic bridge between Africa and her diaspora through sound operational processes. Um, I'm glad to be here today. Um, Cordy, she's, she's doing mommy duties today. So uh, we are waiting on her uh, to come back in. So she'll come back in a little bit later. Um, but we all know Cordy. She's the CEO of Environment 360, an amazing recycling and education company that is changing the way they see waste in Ghana. So uh, today we have an interesting guest. Uh, uh oh, wait, uh -oh. Sylvester. Sylvester, are you are you yeah. able to uh, put your camera on? Okay, okay. So we can see who we're talking to today. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Welcome, sir. Welcome. So, um, Sylvester, you are from uh, Russia, of all places. The only thing I ever knew about Russia was the drink, the Black Russian. Now I have one. <laughs> right in front of us. Man, how are you doing today? How are things going? Yeah, right now, uh, we just can't have the season of COVID, so last month. So it's a little bit of, uh, let me see, so go ahead, say what you said again. Yes, I said uh, we just entered our winter here. It's getting colder here right now. Uh, it was uh, last month that we experienced our summer, so we just entered the winter right now. So the weather is becoming bad. As you know, Russia is one of the coldest countries in the world, right? So I do not envy you at all. Um, I lived in Chicago uh, for one year, and Chicago was so cold, I left America entirely. I was like, I'm done with this whole country. <laughs> so I, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in Russia. Um, so yeah, we, we have you on the show. Please give us a little bit of background uh, about you so we know who we're talking about today before we jump into the uh, current events. Um, you know, like what, what, what's the work, what's the, uh, yeah, those type of things. Let us know where you are. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Sylvester Obiho. Um, I came from Nigeria and I've uh, been in Russia quite for going to 10 years now, All right? Um, so <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so it's been quite challenging when I came to Russia. Uh, you know, as a black man, when you come to a country like Russia where they don't speak English, it's one of the biggest challenges that you're going to face. All right, so when I came, I met some friends who tried to help me, but it's so difficult that um, when you go to buy something in the shop, uh, the people you are meeting are speaking Russian and uh, you don't know how to communicate. So it's like when you go to the bus station, anyone you meet, they are speaking the Russian language. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of everywhere you go is the language that you hear. So this is the biggest challenge that every black man faced here. All right. Even if you have friends who will guide you, they can't guide you every time. There is a time you will go alone because maybe your friend is busy. All right. So it will be a very big problem. Like uh, that is one of the biggest challenges we face here. But as time goes on, uh, when you begin to hear the language, you will start hearing what you call private. Private is like hello when you tell somebody hello. So that is the first stage when you try to learn. You say kakdila. Kakdila is like how are you? So these are the first uh, basically that you are going to learn from the street. So even somebody who comes today and tomorrow can hear that. So when you begin to communicate uh, gradually, gradually. So actually I came to study in Russia yeah. and uh, um, I was so privileged to study uh, with Russian language. So thank God today I did my first degree. I actually, when I came, I joined the preparatory course uh, for one year. So after the preparatory course, I got my certificate to uh, study uh, my full-time uh, bachelor's. So I did my bachelor's in Russian language. I did um, regional policy. That was my first degree. And after that, I did my uh, master's in international relations, also using Russian language. Right now, I'm a PhD student. 
all right so mm -hmm. doing some research about um the globe all right so it's quite interesting so to be in russia so okay okay i have, I have so many questions to ask you about russia so mm -hmm. uh but before we get into it um there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now um so we can touch on a few of the current events i know about so i know that right now every democrat in america has is being held in an uncontrollable clinch until we find out what goes on with this election mm -hmm. um how does this whole trump biden election look from the uh from the russian slash nigerian perspective from where you are oh uh, for russians uh, like of today i was listening to the news uh looking at it from the russian perspective um you know, uh, they are talking about uh, if uh, possibly that Trump is going to lose, then what would be the stand of uh, Russia? And um, um, so mm -hmm. they were like, uh, Joe Biden is going to open up a border for Russia to enter. So that is one of the major uh, talk they were discussing about today, that the, current, the new president is going to open up a border for them to come in. That is an mm -hmm. advantage they are giving to him. But they are looking at it from the other side. What will be the um, the, the economic situation? So these are the two major questions they were trying to discuss today in their television. So for some, they were saying it's better Trump continues because now they already know the stable the state uh, the situation of their their currency, right? But if Trump eventually loses, that is going to be a new phase of them and they don't know how this situation is going to, whether it's going to favor or it's going to be to the disadvantage of Russia. Very, very interesting, very interesting. So from the Russian perspective, I guess you all really don't care that about, it's like the, the whole moral or the deception part of, of Donald Trump, it doesn't even enter in, there's no like, we hate this guy. Yes, that is exactly what they are thinking now. They, it's like uh, who win can win. They don't hate him. Okay. They are not against him. They are just after the economic gain, right? Mm. Because uh, we know that states are always uh, about uh, gain, what they're going to gain. So that is the major pursuit of every state, which uh, normally in international relation, we use that word state. So these are where they are more concerned. What will be their gain after this election? This is interesting. This is interesting. I swear that somewhere floating around in Russia, they have a video of Donald Trump doing something. The way that you guys, <laughs> we, because from our side, it's like there's like election tampering. There's like, uh, yeah, just like social media takeovers, like all of this, all of this stuff that they talk about, about basically how Russia is attempting to influence the politics of the U.S., I mean, I, I feel like they have, he, there must be dirt the way he has that, he's kept that relationship, the way he's tried to in many ways emulate uh, uh, President Putin, or I'm sorry, what is the, is it, it's not president, right? Yeah, President prime Putin. Minister. President Putin, okay. I didn't know yes. it was president or prime minister. You see, this is my American ignorance showing again. <laughs> no but problem. yeah, did, like what happens, like what, what is the response, I guess, or what are some of the conversations that happen on your side when the American media is basically accusing Russia of attempting to destroy democracy, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, the, what normally uh, here they were saying that um, the, it was Russia that helped uh, uh, Trump to win the election. Mm -hmm. the very first yes. time. That was the major media broadcast here. But um, what is the evidence of this proof? Because we, one thing to say a word, and it's another thing to come up with a proof. So, you know, media can go ahead and say anything, right? Media can lie a lot sometimes, all right? So that yeah. is one thing. So there is no fact that Russia helped uh, Trump to win the election. So that is the major thing. That is why right now Russia is kind of uh, being trying to be neutral so that they won't okay. again blame them for the same uh -huh. thing. Okay, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Because like from our perspective, 
they keep showing us proof, but some of the proof they show us is like, I don't know if you've heard of like Guccifer 2.0 that, uh, that was basically saying it was a Russian hack that was a part of the like WikiLeaks release mm -hmm. um, and, and different uh, Russian servers. Now mm -hmm. I will say this, the one thing that Trump has done an amazing job of is destroying my faith in the media. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I, I I probably feel the same way uh, you guys feel over there because I have no idea what to believe whatsoever. Um, so what do you mean? What do you mean by destroying your faith in the media? Meaning that we know that what Trump says, or President Trump. Let me not be dis disrespectful on this public okay. channel. Um, we know that President Trump um, has been caught or fact checked so many times that it would almost seem that he tells more lies than he tells truth. If you are going and, and, and looking at the fact checks, the things that he says. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the major, major news channels in the US is Fox News. And Fox News is supporting him and backing him up 100%. And then you have different varying degrees of uh, liberal, way extreme, extreme liberal uh, news sites that are just having all these different perspectives. And to me, it's just like, how can you have such wide bearing perspectives about the same thing we were all just watching? Like, I like to believe that I don't hate the people that I'm mm -hmm. listening to or watching and that I'm really using my best, uh, you know, you know, mental capacity to you know. make my judgments and assessments. So if I feel like I'm a pretty sane person and somebody else uh, feels the same way, but they decide to share an opinion that's completely the opposite. And it's like, obviously, the it's obviously wrong. I'm just like, all right, man, like, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. So, yeah, the, the president uh, in our country is not, he's, he's not that popular. I wrote a Twitter post uh, today, and the way I explain Donald Trump is that he is like, do you, are you familiar with Tupac? No, really. I'm not. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. I know who you would, I know he's like, imagine if Fela ran for president in Nigeria, mm -hmm. right? And you know Fela's background story. Fela had multiple, multiple wives. Yeah. Fela was on the stage naked, humping and gyrating, smoking weed and doing all this stuff. Really? But he's also president. So yeah. like from a Nigerian perspective, I think people would be like, I mean, yes, he may have 57 wives and yes, he, be, he may be smoking weed, but that's mm -hmm. Fela. He's for us. He's always told our truth. He's always had our back and he's yes. risked his life to do so. We believe in him. We don't care about all the other stuff he's doing. Mm -hmm. We just don't care. Like that is how I see Trump's base supporting him. Like he's, he's saying the things out loud that they whisper in dark corners mm -hmm. when it's regarding racism and different things like that. He'll just come out and say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the major problem is um, it is very hard for people to hear the truth these days. When you tell yeah. people the truth, they don't want to hear it. People want you to lie. And that is one thing that Trump is trying to avoid. He tell them the truth, but it's hard to believe the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like doing things where like, okay, so there's like telling people the truth, right? And mm -hmm. then there are things that are just like flat out illegal. So mm -hmm. like today, uh, well, yesterday he was telling people in the state of, uh, I think it was Pennsylvania that they should just stop voting. Mm -hmm. um, he's consistently done things to basically uh, dis what for like whatever we're accusing Russia of doing, he's doing his own version of it through American policies and laws mm -hmm. and loopholes. And it's just like, you can't tell people not to vote in the middle of an election as the president of the, of the United States of America. Who does that? What, like, who, 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 who are you? <laughs> so like, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, well, I'll get into that in the, in the later section. Let's, con let's continue forth, because like my blood pressure starts going up when we start, start no problem, talking about no problem, I don't. Donald Trump and his policies. <laughs> um, so we know that, um, you know, there's one thing that's, that's been consistently uh, top of the news cycle um, every day, almost in every country, uh, and that is COVID uh, for the last uh, six months at least. Mm -hmm. um, 
So with that being said, we're seeing like cases skyrocketing all over the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. We understand that COVID also enjoys cold weather and you live where uh, cold weather was born, apparently. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so with that being said, um, yeah, like how is COVID there? Like, are there spikes up? Are there like, are there talking about shutdowns? Um, we saw a video where basically Putin decided to release a lion into the streets after curfew to, to make sure people go home. <laughs> but what's the real, like you're actually there. Uh, what, what, what's it like? What's going on, man? Yeah, actually, there was no lion in the street of Moscow. Um, I remember the very first day the news went viral. One of my friends called me from Malaysia. Um, he was asking me, "Where well, is it true there is lion in the street of Moscow? I said, how? Lion? No, there is nothing like lion. Lion in Russia is in very um, northern part of Russia. We don't have lion in Moscow. So he was telling me everything. So I need to go to central of Moscow, where we have the state capital, um, the state building. I actually went there to check and there was no lion in the street. Uh, people were just free <laughs> moving in the street. So uh, <laughs> in the evening, another person called me from um, um, Singapore and was also asking me the same question. So it was like the news went around the whole world and uh, this, this was just a lie. There was no street lion in the street of Moscow. So you hear that everybody, Mufasa did not make it. <laughs> All right, well, actually Mufasa actually didn't make it neither and Simba was not in Moscow. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. So like, as far as like the policies and, and, and enforcement and different things like that, what's, what are things like um, in, there in, in, in Moscow regarding COVID? Uh, regarding COVID uh, for me, um, I studied in uh, one of the biggest university in Russia Federation, where you have um, the highest number of foreigners. We have almost 120 something countries in this university, all right? Wow, so wow. Uh, there are people from different parts of the world in the university, it's an international university. And uh, um, I traveled back to Nigeria during um, December period. And uh, I was in Nigeria in February when I hear that Russia is going on, lock on lockdown. Uh, I need to change my ticket quickly and came back. So when I came back in March, um, I got the information that a lot of cases in the school premises because it's a big university. So a lot of mm. people from China, from uh, different part of the world. So because of this, so the cases were very high according to what they told me. So what I decided to do when I hear the tension was on me. So I need to get an apartment somewhere else to run away from this COVID because the way they were saying the cases are all over the university. So mm. when I got okay. the uh, apartment somewhere outside the university, I was staying there throughout Till now, I'm there. But whenever I go to visit the university premises, all the people I knew in the university are still alive. I didn't hear one person that died. But the media is busy telling a lot of people died, people died. So all the people I know that uh, are students, a lot of people, none of them died of this COVID. So mm -hmm. actually, yeah. I didn't see any case where somebody, even one single person died from this very uh, um, virus. So that is why I don't really believe if really this is true. But the media keep on mm -hmm. speaking about it every day. There are new cases, new cases. Be careful. You are going out, you wear your mask and all this. But I have not seen somebody with my eyes that died of this COVID. So that is just my own part of the story. Well, that it, that it doesn't, so you're just you're you're more so touching on the fact that it may not be as many cases as they as they believe, but you do believe that it exists, right? Oh, uh, why I can't. That, um, maybe you know. uh, for Sean me, doesn't want you to know he, he just had COVID, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him. I was going to surprise him when he said it. But go ahead. See, that's, <laughs> I, I just have to ruin it right now for everybody. Yeah, Sean is had COVID. He's recovering. <laughs> Welcome, Cordy. So now, you, if you you have an idea of what Cordy does, she's here now, just to just to flip tables. <laughs> but yes, you were you were saying, Sylvester. Yes, I actually I would say that uh, COVID is it, all right? It's real, but um, from the way they are broadcasting it, it's not the way it kills. It doesn't kill mm. the way the, the media is broadcasting it. 
So I'm yet to see, as I told you, somebody who died of COVID. So that is when I will really believe that it cares. I believe it's real, but I don't believe it cares the way they are announcing I, it. I, yeah, I think the death rates are a bit higher than influenza or the normal flu. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so it exists. Is there? I think. I think is like you said. Yeah. Like, but the death rate is probably so low that I'm not mm -hmm. surprised that you said that because, from my perspective. Um, I know part of the reason is because I, I travel, even in Nigeria, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria, but I travel around a, a very international community, of course, because I'm, I'm international myself. But um, I know like I've had it, my girlfriends had it, um, even in the US, my mom had it, my sister had it. So like, um, and then okay, my but colleague- Okay, then I wanna do a quick interjection on this too. I think Sean hit the nail on his head. I don't know how it is in Russia, um, but here in Ghana, it seems to really be exclusive to the international, aka expat crowd. Um, I think I, everybody I know that has had it in Ghana is a foreigner, like, or they are a Ghanaian that travels a lot or has a dual passport. They are confined to certain areas. These are the people mm -hmm. that are getting COVID at like high rates high in Ghana, at least. Okay. So now, I, we, let me you know, me and my co, me and my, I had a guy in my office. We were just talking about, is this something about the Western immune system that just can't hold up to COVID? Like, is this something that you're just not built for? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what what I was told, or what my uh, my fiance Ronke brought up was that if you see a lot of, um, if you see people from Africa, if you look at their left arm, there's like a bullet wound <laughs> that's from the vaccinations and things that were going on uh, yes. back in the day. So there's mm -hmm. usually like, I guess, I don't know how they do this or what, but like everybody has this scar on their mm -hmm. arm. Like so basically thing. Yeah, it's like a 16 barrel shot or something. Our parents have it as well. They just stopped using this type of shot mm -hmm. in the US For by the time we came around. For good reason. But my mother has this same thing. These, these scars I see from this thing are like ridiculous. They look like a, my like, mom has like a the same thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yes. uh, yeah, I don't know. I like what we're doing now. Uh, so um, with that being said, yeah, the, the, the conspiracy theory we were creating ourselves was that maybe those uh, vaccinations, um, experimental or not, I don't know, um, maybe those are offering some extra layer of uh, safety that a lot of other uh, people are not uh, privy to, possibly. Or and also maybe, like, the American diet is terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it's just the diet and lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're here now. We can talk. It's okay. It's just us. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we touched on, uh, Cordy, you just joined us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Would you like to be the illustrious you that you are and, and give us a little bit of something? I mean, for those of you who don't know, I'm Cordy Aziz. I'm the founder and executive director of Environment 360. I've been living in Ghana for 10 years, and I am the other host of Abroad While Black. So sorry for joining, but this just so happened to be scheduled over my daughter's bedtime. Um, and if you know me, you know that because I uh, am a businesswoman and I work so much, I do not joke with family time the same way I joke. I don't joke with business. So business time is business, but I can never sacrifice putting my little to bed. <laughs> so I had to put the baby to bed. This is how you are with your first child, right? The first child, they get all my the attention. The next child, this is the you great thing about being anyway. over 30 five and having children. This mm -hmm. is the great yeah. thing about being almost 40 with children is that you probably take a different approach. Like, <laughs> oh, my, my, I don't know, my third child might be drinking 40 ounces by like two, but that's another story. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta survive in this world. Um, but let's, 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 let's go. So Cordy, we talked about COVID. We talked, uh, we touched briefly about the presidential election and I got high blood pressure a little bit there. Um, are, are there, were there any other um, current events? Cause I do want to ask about some Russia specific current events. I don't events. know, but I want to call that Trump may win it still. I wouldn't count him out um, between Pennsylvania that has 20 votes, North Carolina and Georgia. He can essentially tie or get one vote more than Trump. So until these three are counted, 
people are around doing a victory dance for Biden. I would just reserve that for just another 24 hours or so. Yeah, that's what we were saying. People remain clinched. Um, mm -hmm. White, White Tupac has basically packed the courts and he's suing everything moving. So um, this thing, not only could it be stretched out, allowing him to have more time to sow discord among so many people, um, but he could also like, he could also flip it just like, uh, just like what happened with uh, Bush, um, President Bush back during that election with the lawsuit in Florida. I mean, he didn't flip it. He's just using an historic precedent. That's what you have the court for, right? I mean, that's another way that's of saying it. Yeah. That's, that's why it matters who's on the Supreme Court. It boom, matters. Boom, and, that's why not, and that's why not everyone should vote because most of you probably didn't even put two and two together by now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, the past so enjoy life someplace else. <laughs> please do. Please, please use that passport. Um, Mr. Sylvester, like, are there any like current event or news happenings inside of Russia that the, the rest of us on the outside wouldn't be aware of? Anything scintillating? Yeah, of course, there are a lot of things. I feel like Russia's looking. A lot of oh. things, yeah. Actually, um, like in Russia, you know, right now, uh, let's go back to the COVID. Um, the, you remember they trying to, uh, there was a time they said they got a vaccine for COVID, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, tell us. Yes, they said the COVID, um, people were reporting that they hacked this from America, that they hacked the, um, the, 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 what America that discovered this, but mm. Russia now did the counterfeit. So the question now everyone is asking in Russia is where is this uh, very vaccine that can cure this um, COVID? If there is this vaccine, why are we going on a kind of a restriction? Like right now you can't move, like they are trying to control people. You can sit in some cafes and eat in some restaurant. You can't sit there and eat. You need to order online and uh, they will deliver to you. And uh, uh, people who are old doesn't move. Like they put this law, when you are up to 65 years, you are not allowed to move uh, from your house. Yeah, so yeah. you stay at home. If you are below um, 18, you can stay at home as well. You don't, you don't need to go out. So that is why they stop the schools. So all the schools now are online, all right? Mm -hmm. But yeah the question remains why if they have found the cure for this very uh, virus why are they stopping people from moving around so why is there a restriction in movement and also they are trying to vaccinate everybody um i remember in the university right now they said everybody should go for a vaccination like uh, mm -hmm. people are scared like me i didn't go for the vaccination because uh, i am afraid i don't know what is this vaccination all about i have did my i did my covid test two times and i was i, I tested negative so why am i going for vaccination so uh, a lot of people went to do it but me i refused and some other person so the big thing going on right now is uh, like the foreigners are asking where is this uh, the they call the vaccine razor blade when you translate the word, what? they call it, uh, in Russia, they call it Sputnik. Sputnik means razor blade, a razor blade. Oh, uh, yes. okay. Yes, okay. tra uh, translation. All the time I thought Sputnik meant potato. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where is this uh, Sputnik? Where is it? If it can cure very fast, then why are we not uh, using it to cure people who have this COVID and everyone will be free? So uh, that is the current situation now uh, concerning the uh, virus issue in Russia. Um, do you think that the fact that certain people don't want to take the vaccine may delay them uh, actually kind of letting people go free or, or maybe like production times of the vaccine itself and how quickly they can get it out? Do you think that has any impact on why they are still pushing forward with that? Yeah, actually, they said the, uh, the daughter of the president tested the vaccine. That was what they told us last two months, and it worked. Oh, the president's daughter? Yeah, tested it, and it worked. That's so, the president's daughter. Yes, yes. If she tested it and it worked, then why is it that other people are not using it? 
why are they not using it to treat people so that everyone can be virus free? Okay. But the only thing I want to do is I want to bring up the difference, I think, between a vaccination and a, a cure. Um, I think you take a vaccine as a preventative measure, so it actually releases small doses of the virus within your system so that your immune system becomes uh, familiar with it and then sets up the antibodies. However, though, it's not a cure. So if you get it, you still, I mean, end up getting it. It just exposes your immune system to it so that it's not like a new virus that wreaks havoc. But it's the same thing with like the flu vaccine um, or the polio vaccine. Like technically, yes, it's supposed to stop you from getting it. However, there are some cases where, I mean, you still get it. You get people that take a flu vaccination every year. And I mean, like this happened in the U.S. last year. I think they gave the wrong strain of the flu vaccination. So people still ended up coming down with the flu. So I think that we have to be careful saying that there's a vaccine versus there is a cure. Because I don't think viruses can, I don't know of many, once again, I'm not a scientist, I don't know, but I don't know of too many viruses um, that actually have cures. I know that they can be managed um, and I know that they can be prevented, but I don't know if they can actually be cured and eradicated mm-hmm. because they yeah. also be yeah. right. Sorry, I was gonna say, yeah, just to add a little bit on what you're saying, that yes, a vaccine, taking a vaccine is initially giving yourself a weakened form of mm-hmm. the disease itself. Um, and this is, I start getting confused about, um, about how this works, because I know that vaccines are not like bacteria, but mm-hmm. I know that they're pushing us to use antibacterials and different things like that. So I'm just all confused, but I decide just to follow the rules, uh, more or less. <laughs> and how about we um, just move on to a subject where we're all more knowledgeable, which is moving abroad, because I don't think any of us knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. An expert in epidemiology. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't know if Fauci knows. Well, Fauci is but so yeah, we do know a lot about living abroad. So, Sylvester, you sound like you're French speaking, correct? Not really. Um, from Nigeria. I, Oh, Nigerians have that. Let me tell you about Nigerians. I feel like Nigerians' accent varies. I've met Nigerians in every country oh, I've cool. ever been to. I feel like you never ever sound the same. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the adaptation to accents, languages, and other things is amazing. I think you definitely are in competition with the Chinese. Thank definitely. You so much. Nigerians can live anywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. I traveled so uh, when I was very young, and uh, so that helped me a lot. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so yeah, let's get back into this. So we we've gone past the um, we've gone past the current events and whatnot. So let's let's dig more and uncover a little bit more about you, uh, Sylvester, because I'm dying to know what it's like to actually live in Russia. Um, so with this being said, um, like what do you do? So like I know you're like a student, and even by the way you said you are collecting degrees over there, I know you must be a Europa guy. You must be. <laughs> Yeah, but, actually, yeah. Actually, but yeah, what do you, uh, you do there? Um, um, yeah, how do, you, how do you eat every day? Like, what is this like? Let me know. Give me some info. Okay, actually, I'm into different things. Um, I'm actually I play football. And, oh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, that is uh, part time, not full time, because of um, having a student visa. As well, um, I'm into a traveling agency. I work with a lot of traveling agency um, in terms of uh, inviting people, doing visa registration. So I'm also uh, invite organizer. Um, for example, like uh, what we call the Christian community. Mostly, there was a time when we have. Um, there is this uh, in Russia. They say there have not been any prophet that came to Russia since more than uh, 40 years ago, because the, um, according to the history, that uh, the prophet who came here were killed. 
the mm. prophet who came to Russia to in early maybe 70s, 60s. So they were all kids. And um, actually what they said was that they would remove their clothes and bring them out in the cold and put them inside the ice. So they would met and die there. So that wow. gave attention to so many people to come to Russia. So people were afraid, like a prophet. When I mean prophet, I mean major prophet. So people are scared to come to anything religion. According to their law, religion is not recognized. So that is one thing you should know. So according to their religion, so they don't have any space for religion. So anybody that is going to do anything religion becomes scared. So because of this, so people are scared. So it, there was a time when um, uh, we wanted to invite one prophet from Nigeria, for example, and uh, people were scared. So uh, it happened to be that I was the first contact they had. So when I organized this program, uh, a lot of pastors, for example, were calling me and telling me, don't go ahead with this plan. If you do this, you will have problem with Russian uh, laws. They, have, uh, they were sending me a message that will make me scared. Right, so but it's just like God is speaking to you to do this, and uh, you are refusing. So I made up my mind to go ahead with the planning of this program, and uh, to God be the glory, the program went successfully. So it was uh, the biggest gathering of black people in religious matters in Russia. That was in 2018, and uh, first time you are seeing more than or uh, 3,000 to 4,000 blacks gather in one uh, hall. The people from different part of uh, countries, Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and other countries. So it was one of the biggest uh, uh, breakthrough for Christian community here. So that actually gave room to other pastors. After that, a lot of you know Nigerians now they like to travel. Mm -hmm. So other pastors trying to come here last year. Some ministers who went to gospel attics, so they started coming in. So. The first program that broke that yoke was the program that uh, we organized uh, in 2018. So I organized programs. I invite um, like um, into tourism, maybe visa, like people who want to study. In fact, uh, traveling agency. Um, also, I do photograph. I'm a mean, photographer and other things as well. So sometimes people get confused of what am I doing exactly. Uh, like when people exactly, who want to, and I'm like yeah. this dude so, is student, <laughs> profit, profit seeker, visa getter, uh, photographer, <laughs> this record is, breaker. This is, <laughs> This is why I moved to Nigeria. Nigerians, he's, you're saying he's all these things. He is Nigerian. Nigerians hustle. This is why they are the best. They are seen as the best immigrant class. Nobody likes to talk about it, but they're seen as the best immigrant class almost wherever they go because they go there and they hustle. They find money. <laughs> Where there's no money, they will find it. <laughs> so it's interesting. So how long have you lived in Russia now, Sylvester? Oh, uh, for 10 years plus now. Oh, for 10 years plus, that's a long time. I've been in Ghana that same amount of time. So mm -hmm. a few things I know about Russia. So the woman that does my suite is from Russia. I would tell y'all what suite is, but it's none of your business. Just Google it when we're done. The okay. woman who does Google my suite now. is from Russia. Mm -hmm. I love her. Um, yeah. She is everything. And I know that one, when they have weddings, they start drinking very early in the morning. Vodka yeah. is definitely their mm -hmm. thing. I know that they love skiing. Mm -hmm. I know that they are known for this little doll inside a doll inside a doll inside a doll thing. I forget what you call it, but she bought me one back. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And I know that, once again, I never really thought about it, but I know that they love African fabric because she recently started a clothing line and it is selling off the chain in Russia right now. So when Russians see you as a Nigerian or as a Black man, what is that like? Because, you know, Sean and I, I mean, I live in Ghana because I enjoy being around Black people all the time. I'm sure Sean does too. So it's interesting to see people from the continent or even for me for America that want to immerse themselves in European culture. Because mm. whenever I go to Europe, I'm like, on, on the watch, like, all right, I got four days to go. <laughs> Stay woke. <laughs> they be creeping. All right. Yeah, what is that like? What is it like to be Black in Russia, a Black Russian? Tell us. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, it's a very interesting part of the story. Um, I had a neighbor 
um, who, who he has been here for past uh, 25 years. He mm-hmm. married to a Russian and uh, right now he's divorced. He told me a story <laughs> of when he came to Russia, he met with his wife. You know, we are living in Moscow, which is the capital city of Russia. So his wife is coming from very far. You know, Russia is very big. It's the biggest, uh, they have the biggest landmark in the Is she from like Siberia side or something like this? Siberia, yes. So (laughs) for you to travel from Moscow to Siberia is seven days. You spend seven days on on the train. So so it's very, very far. So when um, this, my uh, neighbor traveled with his wife to because they met here in Moscow. So they traveled to Siberia to go and visit the family of uh, the, uh, the lady, right? So when they got there, the, the father of the, of the wife saw him, saw him coming. So he shouted, he shouted in Russia. He said, um, um, like, no, he shouted, um, um, we call it, um, like, where did you catch a monkey? He, ca- he shouted, oh. I can see a monkey. I can see a monkey. Where did you catch it? Where did you catch it? So the wife was trying to stop him. Stop that, stop that. Because, you know, some people, like, there are this set of people who, who are always drunk here. So they don't care when they say what. So this man happened <laughs> to be one of them. Because here, <laughs> one of their tradition is drinking. All right? So... <laughs> He was asking his wife, his child, that's the daughter, where did you catch a monkey? Is that a monkey real? Is it real? He was trying to touch him. Uh, touch him. He said, this is real. Monkey. Real. Real monkey. Like, for him, he was surprised that he'd seen a monkey live. He said, this monkey is living. He said, his wife, where did you catch it? So my friend was, he said he was uh, kind of, he, he, he don't know what to do at this situation. Because for the first time in history, somebody is telling him, you are like, you've, I've seen a monkey life. So the wife was confused at that particular time and uh, they were kind of confusion. So he said this man went inside his house, carried the money he saved for his entire life, broke the, uh, what do you call it, save. They save, they used to save money in the house. He said this man yeah. broke it and went to buy drink, call his neighbors that they should come, that he have seen, uh, what he has mm. never seen in his life. He buy drink. He, now he told the guy, come on, you are my friend now. He's trying to make him his friend. No more a monkey. Now he's now trying to make him say, drink, everybody. So he called people to come and drink with him. All right. So it was kind of celebration because he was, he wondered how this thing happened. Like he have never expected that he would see such a person in his life. So he was touching him because the guy is very dark. The guy is really dark. You know, there are some persons that are very dark. So he was trying to touch his hand. He was. He said, "Are you a human being? Are you a human being?" He was speaking in Russian. Hey. Are you really? And now we know why they are divorced. Yeah. <laughs> now so, we get it. Because <laughs> if you call so, me a monkey, now I get diabetes across your lip, Thanos mm-hmm. style. <laughs> yeah. So in Russia, but Sylvester. So I mean, okay. So this. Was, okay. In Russia, you call it what? Yeah, we call it Abyssinia. I'm trying to remember the name he called Abyssinia. That means monkey. Okay. I would, okay. Thank but I, but I, I mean, I'm already trying to learn tree, so I mean, one mm-hmm. language at a time. So, <laughs> but Sylvester, this is really interesting for your friends. So, does this mean like you've been there ten plus years, and I mean, you've never dated a Russian? I mean, I have to know about you. Like, how are you? <laughs> what is your love life like? Did you just find another Nigerian and hook up? Did you, I mean, are you out here in dry land being called a monkey, like at your friend's birthday party? Like what's, what's going on with you? Now, first of all, Pastor Sylvester <laughs> may not be able <laughs> to, to air out his laundry, but so I'm going to say the Lord has a way of exposing people. It's better to do it now, Pastor, than, than be exposed later. <laughs> Say that there. Yes. The so Lord knows know. who you are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us know too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. What is dating in Russia like for a black man? Oh, uh, actually, um, for me, a lot of uh, black people who came here. Uh, one of the major reasons why our black people is going out with Russians is for document purpose. 
because mm-hmm. yeah well, why, did I say this? why did i say this uh you know um 90 percent of black people living here don't have documents mm. so there is this uh, kind of every day they face problem with police or I hear they're know. like I hear the Russian police are like all about shakedown of papers. Mm. I hear they're all about like pull to the side, let me see your papers. Why are you here? Actually, um, looking at the police, uh, of course they are doing their job, but I will tell you, Russian police are the best to compare to any other part of the world. I've been to several other countries. I was in Malaysia for like two years. I lived in Malaysia and I know what it is for you to live. Even with your document in Malaysia, for example, they will harass you. But the Russian police are opposite. Whether you have document or you don't have a document, for the fact that you are black, they don't care about you. They only care about you when you commit a crime. Why did mm-hmm. I say this? When um, there is people we call black heads, they are people from former Soviet Union, like Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Azerbaijan. These are the problem that Russia is facing. These are people who are committing crimes in Russia. So when you are going along the street and uh, these people are passing, the police will leave you that is black man and go for these people. They will stop them. Anywhere they see them, they must stop them. So there is this thing they see that black people actually here are not committing any crime. So that is why black people here are safe. Haven't known that 90% of them don't have documents. Mm, interesting. So another thing then that I heard from this that really sticks out is that you lived in Malaysia. Now, why is it that you think black people, because I know a lot of blacks also look at living in Asia, like Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, these type of countries. So maybe you draw the difference between Russia and Malaysia and maybe what has sort of kept you in Russia for 10 years and why you had to leave Malaysia after two years. Yeah, when I got to Malaysia, uh, it was a very big challenge because um, I felt like I traveled to abroad and I wanted to stay, but so, Mm To be sincere, after my two months, I regretted why I traveled out. Really? Yes. Uh, if you are, I was uh, studying in Malaysia, and um, when you are going out, even if you have your document with you, the police will arrest you and keep you, they have the right to keep you for two weeks with your document, yes. with your document, with your student document. I've been. What? Uh, Yes. Do you think that they do the only African students or is it like any black person any pretty much? Black person, any black person they see. I would, I've never known that about Malaysia. So when when we are going, I remember when one day I was going to play football. I saw a police. They stopped us. Do you know they have to carry us? We are going to play football. We had our document. They need to take our document, carry us to a station. We slept there for like three days. Mm. for them to check for them to check so why if you are a police like here they can easily use a a, a machine to check your document exactly immediately within a few Mm. seconds they check your documents very easy but in Malaysia is the opposite they don't have any document they will carry you take you to the station even upon is your document they are still trying to fingerprint you, trying to check if it's you, even if it's you, they, are sure they, they try to call your school. Why did you give this person documents? Is he studying? Like a lot of shit. So it was not a, a environment for somebody. So they harass you when you have you, even when your documents are okay. But here it's opposite. Here when they see you, whether you have your document, you don't have your document, they can even greet you, they greet you and ask you some simple question. If you can defend, maybe you don't have your document with you, they can even leave you. But sometimes they take you. Even if you, like so many of our people, sometimes I go to station to bail people almost every week, every two, two weeks. My phone is on fire because a lot of our black people that don't have documents, when they arrest them, so many of them cannot speak the language to defend themselves 
to say, okay, I don't have documents or I have. So, so many of them face these challenges, but not every time. So many a time they don't check black people, so many a times. So, but if maybe they couldn't find anybody, you know, the way police sometimes they are going, they didn't see anybody. They can just say, okay, let's just try and let's, let it be that we caught somebody today. So they will carry such a person to the station. When you got there, they will just ask you, what are you doing in Russia? You just say, okay, um, um, I don't have document. I'm trying to survive. My family died. You know, a lot of story of African people. There. So they will just keep you there. Maybe they will tell you, do you have anybody to identify that you are not a, a committing any crime? Maybe by that time they can just call me. So when they call me sometime, I speak to them on phone. I told him, I know him, I'm a student and I can guarantee he's, he's a good guy. He lived. They will just leave him just on phone, just on phone. Sometimes I need to go to a station maybe if the place is closed, but they can easily understand on phone, through on phone conversation, they can just say, okay, go, 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 go. For the fact that you didn't commit any crime. So, but Malaysia is- So that's interesting. Yeah. And so one of the other, the other things we talk about, because you're talking about the African community, mainly there in Russia, do you see other Blacks like African Americans or people from the UK as well? And do you guys actually interact or is it still very separate communities? Because I know we've talked about in the past of like finding your tribe or like finding who you vibe with. So I know here in Ghana, we've created a sisters repack group, which are like African American women that are living in Ghana. Um, I'm sure y'all probably have something similar in Nigeria somewhere along the way, Sean, whether you realize it or not. Uh, but do you find that like all Black people in Russia are mingling regardless of background or is it still very Americans here, um, Africans here, Caribbeans here? How is that dichotomy? Oh, actually, there is not a special program for Black community here. Uh, actually, what brings people from different part, black from different part of the world together is maybe they're having a kind of uh, Miss Nigeria, or they're having a program they call Miss Nigeria Russia, Miss African Russia. Um, there are this kind of program African people normally organize, or they are doing uh, Miss uh, Russia or something. So th these are normally in this very university where I'm studying, they are the ones that bring almost, uh, because it's, uh, the founder of the university was a uh, former um, Congolese president uh, who, was, who died um, some time ago. Uh, so uh, he was the founder of this very university before he went to Congo and contested for president and they killed him. All right. So uh, he was the founder of this university. That is why it's a kind of black territory. So anything black people want to co uh, host, so they normally host it within this vicinity of the university. So it's either means. And this Africa. is all black people, even black Americans and. Yeah, because uh, normally when, uh, for example, we want to do Miss Africa, we invite our Caribbean friends, American friends, so a lot of, it's a university, so people will like to come and watch from, in, in regardless of whether they are Nigerians or they are Africans, or, so these Black people come together, but it's normally once in a year during summer, because here we have more, uh, nine months, Cold time, so we only have three months summer. So it's normally during these three months. So, and one thing I'm also noticing from your story is it really looks like you have been able to successfully navigate your life abroad or living in several countries abroad by actually becoming a student. So, can you maybe tell us more about how um, being a student has maybe helped afford you? this opportunity to experience different cultures, to continue to, to educate yourself and attain higher education and really experience things where if you weren't uh, or didn't have access to that student visa, you may not be able to do. Yeah, actually being a student have been, I remember um, when I first came, I wanted to drop out from the university. I wanted to face a football career. Uh, some of my friends left. They went to uh, full-time football and some went to neighboring countries to, you know, so it was quite challenging that um, we are like 10 guys that came together. We are friends, we are together. So all of a sudden, most of my friends, they dropped from the university. They were like, this is Europe. Let me go and make money. It's, you know, a lot of them dropped. So I was like, we're two left out of 10. 
So at the end of the day, I was we we're only two that graduated with the uh, our first degree, right? So after graduating, I uh, because of uh, how good I've been we are trying to uh, you know educate myself and other things, the I got this scholarship from Russia Federation. So Russian Ministry of Education gave me scholarship because I did well in my bachelor's. After the bachelor's, I got another scholarship. Uh, after my uh, master's, I got another scholarship to do my PhD right now. So this is what the education now is trying to pay me. And the, most people in Moscow, in Russia, know me. People know me. I'm very, very popular. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to need to see a poster or something. I'm going to Google you after here. Most importantly, though, Sylvester, I got a question that only probably some of our African colleagues will understand. What's your football age? My football age? <laughs> shots, shots fired. <laughs> um, all right, I want to jump in with a question myself. Um, you already kind of touched it, and you're kind of, uh, not kind of, but your experience there based on what you said with the travel agency and, and whatnot. Um, what is the visa process like there? Like what type of steps would I take or what should I expect if I wanted to travel to Russia for the first time as far as preparing my documents? Okay, um, actually, uh, if you are coming from the States, right? Uh, your visa process, it will be more easy, especially when you have a um, American passport. So it's not the same with somebody that have a Nigerian passport. All right. Uh, I remember when I did the program, some pastors came from the state. I did the invitation for them. So the invitation for people who have American passport uh, is very simple. So with a uh, uh, hundred and fifty dollars, you can get yourself an invitation and come down to Russia. All right. But somebody with Nigerian passport can spend up to five hundred dollars to get an invitation mm -hmm. to come to Russia. Yeah. So is that uh, expensive? What contributes to the price difference? Uh, because uh, they have this uh, immigration law that uh, people from social countries, people from Europe, people from Australia, the prices vary. So they know African people, uh, you know, they all of them want to travel. So they made it a bit difficult. So sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, so many at times they can even deny them visa. But for people from the state, I, they can only tell you, go and correct this. If you maybe the information is not correct, they will tell you come back and get your visa about how uh, so i'm assuming there's no like visa on arrival or anything like that right no no there is no visa on arrival it's either you come uh, with tourist visa or maybe business visa or you come with uh, um diplomatic visa so mm -hmm. so visa. if i'm just a normal if i'm just a normal citizen coming there to visit um, and I submit my paperwork, like about how long does it take before you would get an answer or a response? Yeah, uh, for example, I can do an invitation for you within one day to come to here. So the next day you, you can go and submit within maximum one week or three days, you can get your visa. Okay, down. make sure make sure you send uh, you share with me like the information where if somebody wanted to reach out to you. So anybody from the community watching the video may okay. want to come to Russia, you may be the guy they need to talk to. Okay, no awesome. problem. Yeah, and there's something now, else I think that's really interesting is that one of your many hats is that you're actually you do travel and tour as well. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about that because are you confined to only Russia? Are you looking at all of Eastern Europe? So how is that experience also feeding into um, your encounter with other Black people abroad? Do we even patron tour services or, or is it something um, that, that you have mainly a white, white uh, clientele? Oh, actually, um, uh, I studied with Russia, but I also do for Ukraine and also some other part of a Soviet Union. We call it, we call it Soviet Union because there were uh, so many states inside before, like so many countries before they break up. All right, so maybe places like um, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Russia, Ukraine. So these are some parts, and Belarus as well, because Belarus and Russia is also very close. All right, so but um, if people want to, it depends on what people want to go for. 
actually what I do is um, if people are coming to study, for example, I can tell them, okay, don't go to Belarus because the law is strict. They are very strict like Malaysia. So I don't always advise people to go there. So if you just want to go for a tour, mm -hmm. it's different thing. You can just go for a tour. And, but if you're going to study, I will always tell the person to either go to Ukraine or if the person have more money because Russia is quite expensive to compare to that of Ukraine. All right. So okay. but there, there are some part of Russia that also that is cheap, but that is the side where people are running away from, like where you can get minus 60, 60 degrees. All right. So people that side are running back to Moscow because in Moscow we experience like minus 30, 35, but people in the Siberian side, they experience minus 50, 60. So it's the kind of a big challenge for black people. 50 or 60 yeah. Celsius? Celsius? Yes. yes. I don't even know what that is. Hold on. Let me let me do let me do some quick math. Maybe uh wait, oh my god. You know, it's interesting you brought that up because I was just about to ask about the weather. Because one thing about black people worldwide, we do not like extreme cold weather. I don't care if you're American, if you're from the UK, if you're from the Caribbean, if you're from, I mean Africa, wherever you are from, we do not like the extreme cold. So I noticed you're indoors right now. Is it because you can't go outside because of the cold? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the cold is uh, just beginning right now. So right now it's like normal, uh, maybe five degrees, 30 degrees. And so, so it's uh, for, for right now, we're not feeling it. So it's for those of y'all dealing in Fahrenheit, this is really like 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is interesting. He thinks this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, yeah, let me, let me give you this. So I think like, it's like 50. So maybe it's 50. No, no, five degrees, because I, I had to break out the calculator. So five degrees is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not bad. But when he said negative 60, that's negative 76 degrees. It's true, but now, 41 degrees is wintertime in Chicago. Yeah. 41 degrees is summertime in Chicago. Are you serious? It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> Chicago is down when it to zero. 50 degrees. 41 is cold. When you hit 50 so degrees in video, Chicago, drop it in the comments if you think 41 is cold. Yeah. If you don't think 41 is cold, yeah. cool. But if you're like me and you think 41 is cold, drop mm -hmm. it in the comments. So I'll say this. Like maybe maybe it wasn't it wasn't all the black people. But mm -hmm. what I saw was that when it hit 50 degrees, I started seeing t-shirts and shorts. And I was baffled. I was baffled. Because to me, yes, 41 degrees is so cold. I grew up so, in Illinois. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Illinois. 41 degrees is cold. Okay. After you've been fair. on lockdown all winter, 55, 60 is when you start seeing shorts, but 41 degrees is cold. Potato, potato. So with that being said, um, were we, okay, so there's the temperature, there's the weather. Um, I want to jump into I, another you know question. What I'm going back to because Sylvester, now I know you a man of God. Mm, you know, you got to have faith. You, know, you don't know that the way I, God has built me, He says He still ain't told you about His dating life. He he hasn't. <laughs> he has not. He has not. I tried to save you, bro. You are not to be saved today. What's up? What's it like? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't want to okay. know about your neighbor, your mammy, your auntie, <laughs> <laughs> your yaya, -ya, your Madea. <laughs> one friend left out of the 10, we talking about you. <laughs> you see his whole body, his whole body changed when you said it. He, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> tell us, tell us. <laughs> you need to leave the room. Are you sharing one room with your wife now? <laughs> No, no, I'm I'm not living with a woman. I'm I'm still single, right? So I'm not married. <laughs> For ten years, you've been single. Yeah, actually, um, I'm believing God I will marry a black. That is my belief. For me, I've never did that. Um, I will go for how, a Russian. Which, how old are you again? Give me your football age. <laughs> 30, <laughs> Thirty-one. Thirty-one. That's 38. <laughs> so as someone that just got married <laughs> at 38, I'm going to tell you, 
Chale, the way people believe in God versus getting out there, what are the active steps you're taking here in Russia? So let's say you want to meet a woman for the night. You want to because you're believing okay. in God for a black, but we know God can't find, send a woman to your room now. So yeah. God ain't sending a woman to your room. So now what are the steps you are actively taking? How do you go about pursuing that black you're looking for in Russia? What do you do? So let's say it's Friday night. You know, folks out or so walk me through your steps, Sylvester. Uh, actually, I don't believe I can find a woman here, or let's maybe if God wants it. So I believe I can find it in Africa. Okay, okay, so you're online. You're online. What apps are you using in case some women are interested and they want to hit you up? They want to double like you, double tap you. <laughs> This could this could be the way God is using for you, Sylvester. Don't turn it down right now. <laughs> you, you can swipe left or you can swipe right. I'm just saying. Yeah. So so now you're online. How are you? Where are you going to find this black American? Or I'm sorry, this black anywhere. woman. Anywhere. I don't know. That is what I actually told no, you. No, I need to know where anywhere is. You have Craigslist <laughs> in, in Russia. Are you on Craigslist? I need to know. Okay, okay. This is not mail order but it can be online it can be one when i'm traveling it can be anywhere so oh. for me, i believe uh, all right Look, let, me, let me let me jump in here because i because because cordy gonna force you to to, to turn your hand and you will not you will snot i understand that Keep, you, you gotta hold it down <laughs> all right but let me say this um, even if you're not actively seeking uh, a woman, maybe some of our listeners may be wondering what it's like, or maybe somebody in Russia is listening and they're like, man, where do I go? So like, what is the process of dating? Like, what is that like? Like how typically, what is the normal way a man goes to look for a woman in Russia? Maybe hey, even- I even got one last person. question. Wait, hold on, let him- Why let's is it you think you can't find a black in Russia for you, Sylvester? You just said you organized a program of thousands, 2003. You telling me that in 3,000 women, let's let's say 60% of them are women because women travel more than men. Mm -hmm. So you've been exposed to 1,600 women and none of them were okay for you, Sylvester? Oh, actually, uh, there are some words I can't say because um, we're in Europe. So what most the ladies do in Europe it's one of the disadvantages. So they're in the Ashawo business, aren't they? Yeah. So that is. They're in the oldest profession, and yeah, you don't so, want to save them. So that is where they got it wrong. Oh, oh, but so okay. Now I understand. You don't want to come and and have sloppy seconds. You are looking for something fresh out out the oven. <laughs> maybe <laughs> but okay but like okay so like me i'm a preacher's kid right so i realized that that um you know i fell off the wagon at certain points in life or whatever he's but still, off, I, the I, I, he's still <laughs> off the wagon he's still off the wagon i can see it now i can see clear now <laughs> the sin is gone um but like for me, I remember like the first time my mom accidentally came home and I had a girl at the house. She was upset because we were sitting on the same couch and I had my arm around her. So like she was like, oh, "What are you you out here trying to have, trying to get women pregnant?" And I was like, oh, oh, "Okay, mama, let me take my arm back." So with that being said, though, I yeah, Miss Bobby didn't play. Um, but so say, this is so. What did she think when we were friends in college? Was she like, "And I came home with you that one time"? Was it like? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Cordy, I, I shouldn't say this, but like it's it, it took it took maybe 10 years for them to stop asking what where like when are y'all are y'all dating or y'all I was like she she's just my friend. I'm sorry y'all can't be around a woman for more than 12 seconds without thinking how am I gonna marry or have sex with her. Sure. Like, she's just yeah. my friend. <laughs> I have amazing positive relationships with women as just friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'm sure Sylvester does too. Cordy laughing at me. Shut up, Cordy. You know my dirt. Don't expose me here. Um, so with that, <laughs> but like Sylvester, Sylvester laughing now. Now you see the heat on me. Don't worry, it's not just you. She she flames up everybody. <laughs> but I just know okay, so let me just 
let me move past. I'm gonna I'm gonna move past this 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 dating part. Cordy will probably bring us back, but let, I'm really curious because now that we have touched on the religion part, I know that communism does not allow space for religion. So mm -hmm. what is it like going to church? Because I remember we used to go to church uh, six days a week, twice on Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, so like. Is, is it is it the same as being is it different like what is it like being a christian in moscow um, actually being a christian in moscow is just uh, like you are just on your own because um actually russian people they don't believe in religion as i said before so when you are going to church they're like maybe they think you are having maybe meeting oh uh, i remember one time um when we had a program, right, the pastor that came, he he was, uh, you know how pastors do the shout, you know how Nigerian pastors they shout, like, you know, so they, so I Go remember- Go ahead and drop some tongues. Don't act like you don't know him, Sylvester. Go ahead so, and drop a few tongues on us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he was speaking in like in tongues. Uh, so when um, the, the, For those that aren't familiar with tongues, can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to imitate. I was about so, to. I didn't want to get struck down. Go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when he was performing on stage, I remember one of the ladies uh, was watching on camera, the security. They were watching on camera, so they need to call the uh, DPO, like the DPO of the police that was in, in the region to come and see, because actually it was his DPO I met with him and uh, we discussed things before we told him we're having program. So normally it's a strange thing for them to see black people gathering like that. So when uh, the DPO come, he was watching in camera, he was watching in camera what this man is doing. So after this program, I went to meet him and say, hi, we're done. You know what he asked me? He said, what was that thing that this man was doing like this? Was he drunk? Was he, was he taking some alcohol? Was like he was strange. He was wanted to know why the pastor was shouting. Like what? What That's did he take? Is he you no know, insane? In normal senses? Is that is that uh, magic? He was kind of touching a lot of things. So he wanted to know what was that in the miracle. Like you know when you do, hey, some people will fall. So those yes. things for him was strange. So he was asking me what was that. So being somebody wait, wait, wait. that is wait, wait. I have several questions. I have several questions because you're because this this is interesting. Because so if they have no concept of religion, then we look we look ridiculous. So I have to ask because like I, I'm I'm a Southern Baptist uh, child, uh, Kojic Church. Uh, that is from in a Nigerian stance. That's Mountain of Fire. Mm -hmm. So what type of church did you? What type of church were they witnessing? I must know. <laughs> what type of church? Did you, I mean, oh, if you fire. didn't hear that there yeah. was miracles yeah. going on and people were falling to the ground yeah, and so the you, pastor you was know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you missed all of that, <laughs> you don't know about how God descended on man like, like yeah. uh, fire. You don't know about that. He was in his okay. God's but now okay. one thing I, well, I talk about, to we often don't talk about abroad while black. Sean and I have different stances on this. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and his blood has covered my sins. Glory Sean, to not so much, but it's fine. Whoa, what, whoa, whoa. <laughs> don't set me up as a heathen. Don't set me up. I have a different perspective. My different perspective is people offload their personal religion, their personal uh, responsibilities off on God and they don't understand That's the fine. work behind the faith. But don't get me started. Don't That's then don't have my mama out here. Like Sylvester out here not wanting to look for a woman. Don't don't affect Sylvester. Amen. Amen. But Sylvester, <laughs> what part has like have you found yourself? Because I know moving to Ghana, I think I found myself really getting more in tune with God. And I think it's because then you're living in a place that you don't have a lot of connections. I mean, you realize how much of your life is really out of your control and how much God is in control, at least that's been my experience. So do you think that by you living abroad, like were you this, so did you love God? Were you this on fire for God when you left Russia at the tender age of 21, AKA 28? Nigeria, but yes. Yeah, yeah, actually I was a, a kind of, a, um, 
I don't know how to put it. I love God right from childhood. I came from, a, 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 it was a background. My family came from a, a Christian home. And when I mean Christian home, real, real Christian home. So they don't take rubbish. So that is why I was brought up in that way. So sometimes my friend wonder why um, I stay long in abroad and I don't smoke, for example. They used to ask me, how you spend how many years in abroad? You don't do this, you don't do this. So they used to wonder why, how did they, how was I brought up? So that is a question they always ask me. So for me, it was a inborn and I don't know. So you've been this on fire for God your whole life. I know it was the blood. I know it I always was admire people blood. like you because Lord knows who I was and Lord knows who I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I can also tell you yeah, that does not if God can that, do it for me, yeah. he can do it for you too. <laughs> yeah, but that, that does not mean once in a while we don't uh, sin because it's another thing for you to be a Christian and it's another thing for you to sometimes fall into sin or temptations. So that Drop is the something words. that is real. So now you see now I'm gonna have to take now since you now since you are you comfortable talking about the thorn in your side, Sylvester? Sean knew this was it. Are you comfortable talking about the thorn? Like, what is the thing that you still think that through it all, I'm still working on this? (laughs) I think it's between me and God. So (laughs) yeah, it is well played, sir. Well played. played. Man, this man is doing oh, a, he's doing, so he's doing a Heisman he's doing a Heisman on all of all your tracks. <laughs> well oh, so well all right. Oh, so so I think we, fine. We, fine. we we ended up down this twisted twisted path on trying to understand um you know what what religion um is like there in different aspects um all the all the different questions uh that we had but from your perspective what are some things you want to tell us about russia moscow and living there what are some things you feel like people should know actually a lot of things because um people used to think uh, russia like some people used to ask me where is russia located like some african people don't know where russia is located and uh, Sometimes I'm surprised that people don't know much about Russia because uh, you can remember that after the World War, the um, Russia was destroyed. All right, so people thought Russia is a desert. Yeah. So, but um, people doesn't know that Russia went back to build their country. They didn't relax after the World War, so they went back and build, and they have one of the best metro system in the world. Every day there is new thing in Russia. Every day there is a new thing to, like the governor of Moscow, for example. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder how a politicians can work so hard. I remember during the lockdown, the governor was going from one place to the other, trying to know like the new machines. They, they were trying to build a lot of structures for people to be treated, building a lot of like new new things. So there is this metro system, which they have on the ground because of the weather. So their metro system, they have like built metro station in every part of Russia, in Moscow especially. Even this university where I am studying, they build a metro station after this university. It's something that there is every day they are drawing the map, they are extending the metro. So they have different metro system. So in Moscow as a whole, there is a new thing every day. So the technology in Moscow is going high, higher and every day, right? So they are building a lot of structure, stadium. If you can notice during the World Cup, uh, a lot of foreigners came here. There was no case of stealing. So in Moscow, you can you can hear like somebody go and steal or somebody go and steal because there is the security, the security of Russia. I can tell you is the number one. RGB always being watched. Everywhere is secured. Like if you do anything stupid, even at night, or anywhere in the street, they will find you. So it's very easy for them to track you down. So this made it scared. Like people are scared of committing crime because of this. So people can commit crime outside Moscow or other cities, but in Moscow especially, everywhere is secured and it's hard to commit crime. So you can hardly hear someone being stabbed or someone they carry gun and shoot. So 
So that is one of the things people should know about Moscow. So it's an interesting place. Right. If you watch during the World Cup, there wasn't any case of stealing or people like when we had in Brazil, people were they were going to the hotel, even in South Africa, they were going to hotel to see foreigners things, but there was no case like that in Russia. So all the people who came went back with their luggages, no, no one, they didn't lose their phone or something. So that is one thing about Russia. So their security is very nice and I applaud them okay, for that. So that makes us feel secure then. And then one of the other things we always talk about is, you mentioned you came from a Christian background. Um, you're from Nigeria. You mentioned you did travel um, at a young age, but what actually sort of gave you the confidence to say that, you know what, I think I can live outside of Nigeria and I think I can live there for a long period of time because we know sometimes a lot of people feel like every African wants to live abroad or travel abroad. Um, and sometimes that's just really not true. Some people are very comfortable where they are. It's the same thing as in America. So I typically look at immigrants as very special people. Um, so what was that impetus for you or what was that thing that made you sort of gain the confidence to mm -hmm. think that, yeah, I sort of envisioned my life abroad online looking for this black lady to marry? Yeah, actually, what gave me the passion, like, to think of moving abroad was my career football. So uh, when I, I was playing football, like, we always watching the television, you know, as small children, we watch and see our men playing in Europe. So from that uh, very tender age, I discovered that the best place to play and even do well is abroad. So that's where I got the scenario. Good. Awesome. Um, so you mentioned the security and different things like that. And I know, uh, so let me just drop this. I've had the most negative view of Russia since Rocky came out. I was, I was, I was scared. Um, I know the Russian, uh, the boxer guy was like, if he dies, he dies. And I'm like, man, these guys are hard out there. <laughs> so there's always been propaganda, um, from the U.S. Uh, perspective, especially with the Cold War and different things like mm -hmm. that going on. Um, but they try to make it sound like Russia has uh, certain issues with corruption and like people like uh, the President Putin overstepping his boundaries and different stuff like that. Um, does that does that is that like true? Is it a, is it true at the at the citizen level? Like what is it like as far as like the 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 419? Okay, in actually, Russia. it's a very interesting question, but um, I have a lot of Russian friends and every day we communicate. So they are not complaining much about their president. Why? Because he made everything affordable, like uh, the food. Uh, if you watch, the weather is very bad. So 95% of the food they eat here are imported, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So upon this, the food uh, is one of the cheapest things in Moscow. So this government bring everything to its lowest. So they made food, especially which is number one thing a man need, one of the important things that a man need, they made it very cheap. So um, he pays this, uh, those people on pension, they get their money, the armies, the government workers. So it's a kind of, the system is working. So the people, uh, the, this gap between the, middle class and the rich, you know, it's not that much. So everyone is comfortable, like not everyone, I would say 80% of the people are comfortable. They are living their normal life. They have their cars, they have their um, flats, like where, you know, government build the house and give them, they give them work. So they deduct the money from, you know, how the system is. So with this, it made it uh, comfortable for the citizens so people are not complaining when you use it to compare to that of Africa, where the presidents are greedy. So here the system is working and that is why the citizens are not much concerned about the corruption. If there is corruption, yes, it's in everywhere, but what is the rate? What is the stage of this corruption? So that is what we'll look at now. Okay, and let me ask this last question because um, I'm very, very, very interested in politics. So I kind of better understand the subtle nuances of communism. Um, but you've lived in democracy and you've lived in communism. Um, 
what are some of the differences that you see? Like if it's, I know some people would assume that because it's communist, everybody gets their job picked for them. You don't get to pick what you do. Everybody gets uh, four potatoes and a loaf of bread you every month. Line, exactly. Yeah, if you mess up, you go to the gulag or whatever. Like kind of give me your perspective. Like how is that democracy versus living under communism? Oh, actually I studied the international relation and the, uh, I, I think yes. the best thing that happened to this world is, uh, according to we, uh, the people of international relation, we believe that is democracy is the best of humankind. Mm. Yes. Uh, having said that, this is um, interesting because I, I don't agree. Yes. I don't um, agree. If you look at the, uh, for example, Russia happened to be a communist country before, and. Uh, when you get the story from these people, yes, uh, the government was giving them what they want at that stage, but there is this problem, like they were telling me that when you move around, for example, when it's working hour, for example, around 9, 10, and you're moving in the streets, if police catch you, they are going to arrest you because why are you moving around during the working hour? If they search you and you are going out with money, they will catch you and ask you, where did you get this money from? So it's a kind of, you are not free. You are not free, even if it's your money, you need to prove where did you get it? And if you move around during a working hour, so you must walk, that is the thing. You must walk during working hour. So it's, if you can't walk, then you get yourself in trouble. So it's, just, it's kind of, you are not so, free. So you can't, does that mean like just be somewhere hanging out at a cafe in the middle of the day because you should be at work? Yes. There won't be time for and you. Isn't to... that the same thing people complain about on democracy is that people aren't working and that they are carrying the load? No, uh, like here now, they are under democracy, which when the people who live during the, um, um, the system of uh, this communist tell you their story, so they tell you that now they can easily go out and buy what they want with their money. Nobody will question you. You can go and buy a latest car and nobody will question you. So that is what democracy brought about. But when it's on okay. the communist... So there's democracy now there, right? Yes. Or not? Okay. There yes. is democracy now. That is what I'm trying to tell you. So when you make the comparison... I thought you, you were into politics. That... <laughs> really? <laughs> not Russian politics. I'm not into Russian politics. Just give... I mean, I understand the difference between communism and democracy. I have no... I idea what I didn't happens catch in Russia. They were still a communistic government. They haven't been communistic since USSR. Like, yes. What's they that? haven't like, been like years communist, but oh they God. still are. Since USSR. <laughs> the fall of the communist government. <laughs> so we're still talking about how there's not a real belief in religion and different things like that. So I know that there are certain things people do. But Sylvester, can you confirm <laughs> that communism but died with USSR? <laughs> I believe it did. I believe it did, but let me give you the perfect example. Uh, uh, democracy exists in Nigeria, but technically, if you're paying attention to how the government works, technically, it's a military-ran regime. They so let me tell power. you, democracy doesn't exist anywhere in the world. It's all a smokescreen. Exactly. <laughs> so this is why I have the questions. <laughs> so please continue, uh, uh, Sylvester. Uh, no. I mean, I know they have a president, prime minister, they vote people in, all that stuff. But it's like, is do they do it or is it smoke and mirrors? Because like Putin was walking around like basically, all right, I'm going to be president this year. Thing, you're not going to be in business. He, he's promoting democracy. He's already told you that they're watched. <laughs> he's on that good Russian internet. <laughs> on, he's also Thank you on his like, for promoting democracy and loving the country that you live in. It is safe. It is beautiful. It is secure. Yeah, all you President. need to know, yeah, well, there is one thing you need to know about democracy is democracy varies. Uh -huh. It's not the same type of democracy you, you have, have in America. Like it's what you have democracy. democracy in Russia. All right? So when you compare uh, the difference between America, for example, and uh, Russia, it's a big gap because uh, here, uh, I don't know how to put it, the president can do some things and get free here all right mm -hmm. but in mm -hmm. america there are some things trump cannot do and go free for example now for example now 
since I came here, I have never seen one day where people came out and protest. They do a protest. They don't allow that in Russia. So tell me how in democratic world or country that people don't have the right to protest when they are angry, just like what happened to Nigeria. But in America, people can easily go out and protest. I remember what happened during the Black Lives Matter. So, so these are where the democracy now varies. Gotcha. I understand. Okay. And the reason why so I was I questioning democracy is because Putin was on like his like fourth or fifth or sixth term. That's why I was like, what is this? Because he's been the one holding the power. Yes, so it even actually, seems now, like an yeah. actually, right now, he made himself a uh, life president. So we have more system mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. What were you saying, Cordy? Sorry. I think one last question because we're out of time. Um, so I think you've highlighted a lot of different things about Russia. Um, if you would have to say the ideal type of personality that could live in Russia, what do you think that ideal person is like? Like, what do you think is the best personality to live in Russia? Uh, actually, um, I think um, for guys who enjoy life a lot, uh, Russia is the best place to enjoy life because... Um, I remember hey, our, our 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 people who like to drink. You know, Russia have the best vodka. For example, their best the vodka is a drink. I think you know it. So, Stoli. so when you come to every home, uh, it's a kind of uh, according to the their, their like a tradition, uh, they use a kind of vodka. I remember during the war um, with Germany when they catch uh, the soldier of Russia catch a, a German army, they will give him a vodka to drink. So the vodka will kill, it will start disturbing. You know, like you have not tasted the vodka and they will turn a top of vodka and give to you. You will drink it and you begin to lose your brain. So wow. vodka is one of the, uh, like a tradition. So when you don't drink vodka, you are not a man. For example, I may say that, so it's a kind of, uh, even the ladies, so 95% uh, of Russians drink. So they enjoy life to the fullness. So they believe in, we just came and- Well, to we're enjoy. glad to know you're enjoying. We're glad to know you're enjoying that they look at you as a man, Sylvester, and that you too, you get to enjoy some of that vodka on a cold, cold <laughs> winter day. No, actually I don't have uh, tried to test the vodka one day. The day I tried it, I, I regretted why, because it's not, uh, I don't know how it tastes. For me, it's irritating. Tastes like fire. Oh, we, you, you, so you were like the effect. German soldier. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you gotta throw a little fuel in the fire. That's all I'm saying. It's really cold. You gotta stay warm, right? Homeostasis. But thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think that's the last question. Um, I guess, were there any last words or any last comments you wanted to leave with us before we wrap things up, Sylvester? Okay, uh, actually I will say that um, for those of us, uh, people who have in this uh, video, uh, we drop a message of uh, encouragement for them because I believe that uh, black people all over the world is the same. Uh, I believe that uh, we don't have limitations. It's all about uh, making up your mind. Uh, you can live anywhere in the world and make it. That is one thing I know because uh, I haven't come to Russia. It wasn't in my plan to come to Russia and uh, stay because I don't know where Russia was located before. But as time goes on, I try to adapt. And now it's, I find it difficult. Some people used to ask me now, why are you in Russia? Why you don't move to state? Why this? But for me, I'm comfortable here because uh, there are some things I'm enjoying here that I can enjoy in Africa, for example. So I think uh, it's all about yourself. There are some people who are in Africa making it as well. So it's just all about you discovering yourself. That is what will help you. And that is all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, and where do we you. find you on social media and other places, Sylvester, in case someone wants to reach out to you or a lady wants to hit you up and say, look, I'm interested. Okay. I love uh, God I love you. Yeah, my uh, my Facebook, uh, actually, I'm not social media type. I just uh, put hey, a one picture. Like yeah. yeah, so uh, my Facebook is just Sly FJ, Sly FJ, S-L-Y, 
fj that is my facebook all right okay and if you're interested in contacting sylvester let us know at abroad while black and then we will link you up um, to him as well so that you can learn more about russia and eastern europe um, it sounds like it could definitely be a potential place to stay i know they have a lot of study abroad programs um, that are very interesting particularly i think you can even go for free for some of them um, so thank you so much for your time sylvester i know it's extremely late for you so we really have to give you a special special shout out it's not easy coordinating all these time zones um, for abroad while black. So when we have somebody that's willing to stay up to midnight a little bit past, I mean, we have to definitely give you much appreciation. Um, we've really enjoyed talking with you. It's been so insightful um, and Thank just so continue to keep it going. So as mentioned, I'm Cordy Aziz from Ghana. Okay, nice meeting sure. you. Yep, we have Sylvester here from Russia. We have Sean Burroughs, me, in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, so yes, thank you all. Your name is in the corner. People, people know it's you. Your name is in the corner. That's right. I just want to remind them. I want to. I wanted to ring in there. They sleep at night. Don't be a hater, Cordy. Don't be a hater. I'm ready for Sylvester. You. Who's your favorite? Me or Sean? Sin- <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so yeah. Please continue. We're doing more and more videos. Uh, we're having Black perspectives from all over the world, South America. So continue to check us out. Uh, every Sunday, we post our videos at, uh, I guess, if you're in Ghana, it's going to pop up at 7 p.m. Lagos, Nigeria is going to pop up at uh, 8 p.m. If you are in the U.S., uh, for all of our followers in the U.S., that's going to be about, what is it, Daylight time here. Daylight yeah, that's like so now it is going to be 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Awesome. But and you know what? If you like the page or subscribe, I don't even have to tell you the time because it'll pop up in your notification. So like the page, subscribe, get with us, help us help you. Um, learn more about people that live abroad. Thanks for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. Um, peace, love, hair grease, and everything in between. Okay. Namaste. Yeah, Paka from Russia. According to us, we say bye, Paka. All right. Despedania. Right? Despedania. Despedania. Okay. All right. Yeah.